My name is Barry Coleman and welcome to our mini music theory lesson. Today we are going to learn about two shortcuts in music, key signatures and figured bass. Now in our daily life we are inundated with all kinds of abbreviations. We would rarely see the word doctor spelled out, we always see the uh, spelled as capital DR period. Uh, when we are on social media, there's a whole underground language that is being evolving. And we would find abbreviations like BTW for by the way or LOL, laugh out loud. We're always trying to find the shortest route when we we're going, to, going someplace in spite of what our GPS tells us what, where to go. When we were kids, we learned first long division and then we learned uh, the shortcut cousin called short division. Music is very similar, no difference. We have abbreviations and shortcuts and numeric codes as well, and these help us perform and write music. For instance, thorough bass, or that's another uh, name for figured bass, was used by 17th century keyboard players, and this was a way for them to to perform their music, and it was a way to show off uh, their abilities as a keyboard player as well as their creativity. But first, Previously, we learned about our friend the Circle of Fifths and how helpful a tool it was to figure out all 15 major keys. There are keys with sharps and there are keys with flats, and there is the mothership of C major with no sharps or flats. We learned that if we think five notes up from the previous key, we were able to determine the new key, like going from G major with one sharp and F sharp. Five up, always counting the old key as one, G, A, B, C, fifth, D. D major has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. On the flat side, we would go down five notes. So if you want to find the next key after B flat major, which has two flats, B flat and E flat, we would begin with B flat as one, then A, G, F, and the fifth note, E flat. E flat major has three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat. So the circle of fifths is not only a helpful aid, but it gives us some insight of the fifth relationship keys have with each other. And here we see the major keys written out in all their glory with the correct sharps and flats for each scale. Now, we could easily go through life writing a piece in G major, for example, and every time we write an F, we would just write F sharp. But look at this piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, a very famous composer of the 17th century. And notice what he notates right next to the treble and bass clefs. See that sharp on the fifth line in the treble clef and the sharp on the fourth line in the bass clef? And if you notice in the music itself, there are no F sharps, just F. Well, that sharp near the clefts is called the key signature. It's a shortcut. It tells us that every time we see an F, it's really an F sharp. Key signatures make it more convenient and practical to write and even read music. You just need to remember the key signature. Let's look at some more scales. Here we have a D major scale. I bracketed the F sharp and C sharp. Now let's gather up the sharps and put them in the key signature like this. I written the key signature alone on the right side of the line. A flat major contains four flats. First, take a look at the scale with the flats written in, shown by the brackets. And now using only a key signature, we do not need to write in all those flats into the scale itself since we have the key signature to remind us. Bet you're wondering about this big deal secret. 
Well, here it comes. We can determine what major key a piece is in just by looking at these key signatures. Here is a chart showing all the sharp keys or the keys that use sharps in their key, sign key signatures. Look at the key signature which contains only one sharp, F sharp. If you think of one diatonic half step, the next letter of the alphabet above the F sharp, you will get the name of the key. G. Pretty cool, huh? Let's try another one. Look at the key signature with five sharps. What is the last sharp of the key signature? A sharp, right? One half step above A sharp is B. B major is the name of the key. How about the flats? Well, their secret is a bit different than the sharp keys. Let's take, uh, for example, the key with four flats. See it? What is the next to the last flat in the key signature? We have B flat, E flat, and A flat. That's it, A flat major. Works every time. Now let's take off the training wheels. Look at these four examples and see if you can determine the name of the key. Okay? Hmm. Four sharps. Last sharp is D sharp, which I've circled. One half step higher is, that's correct, E. E major, the name of the key. Six sharps. Last sharp is E sharp. Be careful now. Half step higher, F sharp, not F natural. The key is F sharp major. The flats, five flats, next to the last flat, D flat, yep, D flat major. Two flats, next to the last flat, right, B flat, the name of the major key. A couple of pitfalls to look out for. Let's look at the shops list. Though music is a creative art, the, the writing of key signatures, not so much. It is standardized and must be written exactly how you see it in this lesson. For example, take G major. You must put the sharp on the fifth line in treble clef and the fourth line in bass clef. I've seen students write the F sharp in the first space on the treble clef since that's also where F can live. Flats also, you must learn where to put each flat. No creativity here, sorry to say. It's just a way for everyone in the world to be clear of how to play the piece. It would be too confusing if the sharps and flats were put in any octave. Before we go to part two of this mini lesson, look at this piece of music by Bach. What major key is it in? Shh. Not so loud. After all, it's a secret. Hi, welcome to part two. Figured bass, aka thorough bass, is a musical device used almost exclusively during the 17th century Baroque period. The player was given a bass line, and under that bass line was this secret numeric code which told the player how to fill in the missing harmonies. Sometimes you might hear the expression uh, basso continuo. Now basso continuo uh, is played by basically two instruments usually. Uh, it contains the figured bass uh, part I just told you about. And that's played by uh, a harpsichord or a guitar because it can 
play the chords, but it's also reinforced, the bass line is reinforced by a sustaining instrument like the bassoon or cello. The harpsichord is not really good when it comes to sustaining long tones, so the bass line needed to be reinforced, otherwise it would get lost in the music, and composers and players and conductors would uh, suggest using a sustaining in instrument like the two I mentioned. Here's a typical keyboard part, probably for harpsichord or guitar. This is the opening of an aria or song from an opera by Henry Purcell, a well-known English composer of the Baroque era. Notice the little figures or numbers right below the bass line. By using this figured bass as a guideline, the musician would fill in the remaining harmonies, sometimes with certain embellishments depending how good the player was, and if it were musically appropriate. Let's break the code, this musical shorthand, so that you also can read the implied notes. In previous lessons, we talked about the four qualities of triads. They can be major, minor, augmented, and diminished. And each member of the triad has a name, the root, third, or fifth like the C major triad. When the root is the lowest note, like here, we say that the triad is in root position. When the third is the lowest note, the triad is in first inversion. And when the fifth is the lowest note in the bass, second inversion. Remember that the name of each note remains the same, no matter what position the triad is in. Don't get confused between the bass and the word the root. The bass note or lowest note of the triad can be either the root, third, or fifth. Figured bass in its simplest form tells the musician which position the chord is in. Many keyboardists were able to read figured bass and immediately know how to position each triad or chord. This process is called realizing figured bass. Let's crack the code. Go back to our C major triad and root position, this time written in bass clef. What interval does the root make with the fifth? A fifth, right? Let's write the number five below the staff. And the interval between the root and the third? A third. We write the number three. To translate this into 17th century musical language, the figured bass would look like this. Now let's look at a first inversion C major triad. Here the third is in the bass. What is the interval the bass note makes with the top note, which happens to be the root of the triad? The interval of a sixth. We write six below the staff. And the interval between the bass and the middle note of the triad, which happens to be the fifth of the triad, the interval of a third, right three below the staff. Turning this into figured bass, and voila, this is what we get. Try not to get confused between the names of the triad members, root, third, and fifth, and the intervals these guys make. Last but not least, C major in second inversion. I hope by now you're getting the hang of this figured bass thing. Here we look at the bottom note, like before, which is the fifth of the triad, and the top note, the third of the triad, and figure out the interval. A sixth. Write the number six. And the interval the fifth makes with the root? A fourth. And we write the number four. And once again, like magic, we change this into figured bass. Here are the examples we just worked on all lined up. Congratulations, you now can read figured bass. But wait, there's more. There is a further shortcut to this shortcut. You would think musicians are lazy or something, but figured bass is like the chord symbols we see in jazz charts. In jazz, only the chord name 
is given and we are to figure out the entire chord on the spot and improvise. Actually, Baroque musicians were really the first improvisers. They had to think fast also. Back to figured bass. Most of the time, the 5-3 is understood and not notated. The 3 of the 6-3 disappears, but the 6-4 indication remains the same as illustrated in this handy chart. Well, that's all the time we have for this session. Tune in next time when the minor scales create a major problem. Until then, bye-bye.